Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Evening News. This is Ahmed Chiyama. Looking into tonight's yeah. top stories, councils of Mimo et al. Nalala, Fushi and Muli sign an MOU to hold joint talks with the government on connecting the two islands. Adalat party says that various entertainment activities should be carried out in every society, but it should be done within the reset religious and societal boundaries. And Police Commissioner Hussein Wahid says that the aim of the Blues for Youth camp conducted by Maldives Police Service is to develop youth and adolescents into responsible and upright citizens of the country. of Mimu et al. Nala, Fushi and Muli sign an MOU to hold joint discussions with the government on connecting the two islands. The MOU was signed during a ceremony held at Dal Kudahuadu Council Office. President of Muli Council Ahmed Nafiz and President of Nala Fushi Council Ahmed Shahin signed the MOU on behalf of the two councils. President of Muli Council Nafis told the TV that the two councils held constructive discussions on the topic, including ways to ensure that the two islands are connected before the ongoing land reclamation project in Muli comes to an end. He said that the two islands are connected in many ways and that residents travel between the two islands to go to work and school several times a day and therefore connecting the island would be a huge relief for them. Nafis also said that it would not be a difficult task for the government to reclaim the area and connect the two islands under the ongoing land reclamation project. He said that when the land is reclaimed in Muli as per government's plan, a distance of only 1800 meters will remain between Muli and Nala Fushi. Adalat party says that various entertainment activities should be carried out in every society but it should be done within the set religious and societal boundaries. The party issued a statement last night saying that history shows us that Maldivians have held on to certain religious and societal boundaries but lately activities and behaviors that are outside these boundaries are being seen in the country during various entertainment programs. Expressing concern over the issue, AP said that it is the responsibility of elders to shape young people and guide them to the right path. The statement further said that those who work for the benefit of the youth should be sincere and that facilitating means for them to spend all their time on sports and entertainment is not the way to do that. AP also stated that the party will continue to urge government and various institutions to guide the youth to the right path and ensure that they make good use of their time. Police Commissioner Hussein Wahid says that the aim of the Blues for Youth camp conducted by Maldives Police Service is to develop youth and adolescents into responsible and upright citizens of the country. He made the statement while addressing the ceremony held at Navian et al. Education Center last night to hand over certificates to youth who took part in the Blues for Youth camp held in Formula. Wahid said that police will remain steadfast in doing whatever is required to build a healthy society and that the entire police institution will always work in tandem with the people in achieving the objective. He noted that various police activities so far have engaged over 50,000 adults and children and that this is a huge success for the institution. He added that a decline in criminal activity last year was a direct result of the diligent efforts carried out by Maldives Police Service. At the function, certificates were also handed to students who completed the first round of the program run by police to teach swimming. 58 adults received certificates upon completion of the first round of the program conducted from December 2014 to January 2015. This is the third Blues for Youth camp conducted in Formula. 60 individuals aged 15 to 18 took part in this camp. We'll take a short break now and return in a few minutes. Welcome 
the population of Hulmal has well exceeded 30,000. That said, the presence of only a single state-run school in the island is a great difficulty for the people there. However, Rehendi school being built by the government is believed to solve the issue. Rehendi school being constructed in Hulmale is by far the biggest infrastructural project undertaken by the government for the education sector. Education Ministry says that the 110 million rupiah project will be the biggest symbol of the education sector in the golden jubilee of the country's independence. While the school has been named after Sultana Khadija Rehendi Kambadi, who ruled the country for 16 years, this is the first time a school has been named after a woman. The school, which will be marked as a unique monument for the education sector, is a huge relief for Hulumale's residents. The island, which has a population of over 30,000, currently houses just one government school. As a result, the school had to enroll students beyond its capacity. However, the opening of a new school, which has a capacity of 1,500 students, will solve the issue. Construction of the school carried out by Amin Construction has completed and the final preparations to open the school are being carried out at present. Although 750 students from Ghazi school will be transferred to Rahendi school, Education Ministry says that parents interested in enrolling their kids in the school can do so based on the availability of seats. Maldives Monetary Authority MMA says that its annual Maldivians Travel and Abroad Survey conducted last year was a great success. According to the Central Bank, the survey conducted from the 25th to 31st of December 2014 at the arrival hall of Ibrahim Nasser International Airport aimed to gather information and gain insights into the spending habits and patterns of Maldivians traveling abroad for various purposes. Information gathered in this manner from returning Maldivian travelers include Main purpose of the visit, travel destination, ticket cost, food and accommodation expenses, cost of medical treatment and overall expenses for the whole trip. MMA is now preparing to release a statistical report containing the survey's findings in an aggregated format. The survey conducted in 2013 among 65% of Maldivian travelers revealed that locals spent a total of 2.9 billion rufia or 191 million US dollars overseas. Islamic Ministry decides to start, to start work on streamlining stream the zakat system in the Maldives. According to them, a workshop will be held on the 12th of this month in association with the Islamic Research and Training Institute to work out ways to strengthen and improve the zakat system. The one-day workshop will entail discussions on the bill regarding zakat with relevant stakeholders and is open for participation by five members of the public. Members of the public who wish to take part must apply before 12 p.m. on the 6th of this month. We end tonight's bulletin with the weekly editorial report. Thank you for joining us. Have a pleasant evening. All the presidents of the country had claimed to love the country and its people. They had claimed that they had no personal agendas or motives in serving the people. But it is crucial for citizens to think deeply about this and wonder whether their words were sincere. Five years has passed since modern democracy was introduced to Maldives with a new constitution. None of the presidents Maldives saw during this period completed a full term, but there are three former presidents who are benefiting greatly from the constitution President Mahmoud Abdul Qayyum, whose 30-year tenure was marked by severe allegations of corruption and autocratic rule, which were against the existing constitution. President Mohammed Nasheed, who stepped down from the power three years into his tenure following similar allegations, and President Mohammed Wahid, who was ushered in as the president following the President Nasheed's resignation, all three are enjoying the benefits and allowances granted to former presidents to unimaginable extents. When the huge travel, food, medical, entertainment, office, car, driver, and bodyguard allowances given to these three presidents are deducted from the state treasury, one may wonder whether there will be anything left for the people. Although the state is spending millions of rufia on these three presidents every month without any limit, citizens are not made aware of how and to what extent the state is spending on them. However, there should certainly be someone or a group who can reveal these things to the people and taxpayers. Even though details of these expenses are concealed to the public, 
claiming that it is a matter of national security. Information revealed by credible sources indicate that the highest amount is being provided to former President Maumun Abdul Gayoom, who ruled the country for the longest period. Whether these former presidents have an office or not, whether the office is functional or not, they are given a 50,000 rupiah office allowance per month from the people's money. And while nearly $100,000 is spent on each of their overseas trips, be it medical or leisure, the highest amount is being spent by President Gayoom as the longest serving president. According to the sources, in his overseas trips, he is usually accompanied by his old friends and family, who enjoy five-star services as well as three bodyguards. Although, according to the same sources, incumbent president is accompanied by just two bodyguards. Despite the situation, some are of the opinion that even the president does not have the power to control the situation. Because it is written in the constitution, the parliament passed a law allowing these former presidents to enjoy the taxpayers' money without any limits. Many agree that former president Mohammad Nasheed, who stepped down from the power after three years, is spending these allowances to defame the country abroad destroy the country's tourism industry and economy. His numerous trips to the UK and other Western countries to provide false information about the country and trips to accept medals and trophies from these countries are all being made with the taxpayers' money. And President Dr. Mohammad Wahid, who ruled for merely two years, is also enjoying the same allowances, according to these sources. When it is being written or read about the sincere services these three presidents provided to the country, and its people without any personal agendas, if the taxpayers or the people are made aware of the allowances they are taking from the services they provided, they certainly would not believe that these presidents were sincere.